Fair warning, the, uh, the video today is long and I'm super tired after all this work I've done on this chair. I, it's finally working, which is great. Well, I still have to get the suspension parts fixed on it, but we're gonna do this first. We've got a couple of new people on the Patreon wall here. We've got Ronnie M from North Carolina and a mystery person. How mysterious. One other thing I just realized, the tugboat that I assembled on the live stream the other night, I think I'm gonna give that away. I haven't figured out how I'm gonna do it yet, but someone on Patreon, I think, I'm gonna figure out a way to do that. But anyways, Lego tugboat, uh, come in someone's direction soon. I need to figure it out though. We're headed back over to the machine shop now. The parts for my chair came in they're unfortunately not quite of the quality that I was wanting. They were free, so I'm not being ungrateful in any way, but took them over to the machine shop and they're making a few modifications so that the motor shafts and the hubs will last a lot longer. And they're done with that now, so headed over, I'll see what they did, and hopefully it should eliminate any future problems and I'll never have to replace these parts again. Okay, we have our parts. What they wound up doing was drilling and tapping the hubs and installing some set screws in them. You can see one small one here and one bigger one here. And what this is gonna do when it slides onto the motor shaft is remove any sort of slop or play that these things have, because that was the previous issue is these went on the motor shafts and they weren't tight. And after banging on them for, you know, however many hundreds of miles with that chair, everything tends to wear out and break. So these are gonna keep that from happening. with these little tiny screws. Okay, I think now, we should be ready to install these replacement parts in the off-road chair. We've got our hubs that have been modified, the hardware kit, the motor shafts. These will slide on here. And then essentially what happens after the shafts are on here is we tighten down these set screws with an Allen driver and there will be no more slop in this. These will be positively joined together and we will not have them wearing out again. I did just realize something though. Um, I don't think, there's no gaskets. The gearbox has gaskets that seal it. Um, dang it. Um, well, hopefully when I pull the cover off the gearbox, the gaskets will be in good enough shape to reuse. It's always something. Okay, we've got the chair picked up off the ground and uh, See what it takes to get this job done. Now, as you can see here, see how much slop is in that? Ain't supposed to be that way. That's why things wear out in a hurry. Now, in theory, we can just pop these bolts off the cover here and we should have access to everything we need and we won't have to pull the motors off of the chair. I'm pretty sure they're just packed with grease. I don't think they're using any sort of fluid lubricant in here. So I've got this towel here. I'm hoping it's not gonna make a huge mess. Okay, here we go. First look inside these gearboxes. Looks like our bolts are different lengths. Very carefully. Oh, dang it, I can see the gasket tearing already. And our gasket is toast. Look at that. Basically now what this means is I can't put this back together because I do not have the parts for it. And that, uh, this is frustrating. Well, um, so what we have here, this is the motor output shaft and you can see the gear reduction here. A couple of bearings. Ah, here we go. The output shaft for the motor is right here. So that drives the smaller gears, which in turn drives the bigger gear, and then the output shaft comes out of there. Um, ah, this is really frustrating. I suppose, I wonder if I could make my own gasket. 
I mean, that was part of the service kit. I don't know why they don't have those. Yeah, this is really thin. You know what? I think I might be able to make my own gasket for this. Let me see if I can get this off of here in one piece and uh, maybe be able to trace it, trace it out and cut my own. Because I really don't want to have this thing down for another week while I'm waiting, waiting for more parts to arrive. Okay, we've got it all off except for this last little corner here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's no way this ever would have come off without being shredded. No matter how careful I was. This one corner here is just really... And there it ripped. Okay, well... Okay, well, here's what's left of our gasket. Um, well... I think it's time to head back to the parts house. I'm gonna get some bulk gasket material and hopefully be able to make my own gaskets. Actually, I will be able to, it's just gonna take a lot of time. So I'm gonna head over there and do that. Hopefully we can get this thing buttoned up today. I do not wanna leave this thing taken apart like this for any length of time. I, um, I sent an email back to the guys trying to see if they had the gaskets. And um, here's the response. I don't have new gaskets. We just use the original as they don't wear out. You just have to be careful not to rip them when you take the ear box apart. That's pretty absurd, right? Gaskets don't wear out? I don't want to wait around anyways. I'm just going to go get my own. <laughs> and we're going to fix this up. Oh, man. Thank you for saying the parts. I appreciate that. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Gaskets don't wear out. That's a good one. Well, made it here to the industrial supply. And um, <laughs> gaskets don't wear out. dollars later I think I have the stuff I need some bulk gasket material and a pan to clean the parts in some solvent grease paper towels and the aviation gasket maker stuff yay all right time to continue this little project luckily the cats I don't think they've disturbed any of this and I don't see any greasy paw prints uh, so that's probably good first off uh, Carl's Jr. Lettuce Wraps. Better be careful, Mo. you're gonna get grease on your fur. I've been working on cleaning up the cover for the gearbox on this thing. Uh, basically take all the grease off of there, use a little bit of solvent, and getting it cleaned up so that we can put it onto this gasket material, trace it out, and make a new gasket. I would, however, like to take this moment to point out that there is no amount of being careful during disassembly that can prevent gaskets from doing this. If they have been on here and have decided to stick to the aluminum, it's not possible to be careful in a way that you can remove them without damaging them. This is not coming off. This is a razor blade. Allow me to illustrate what it actually takes to remove this. Really sharp razor blade. It still just flakes off. See that? Yeah. So, sorry guy, being careful has nothing to do with gaskets. I still can't believe that someone actually said gaskets don't wear out. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna finish cleaning up this part, and then we're gonna make some new gaskets. I would also like to point out that what I'm doing is not 100% kosher. This is a steel breakaway knife. This is an aluminum part. These two should never touch each other because the steel can gouge the aluminum. I've done this so many times in the past and I have so much experience doing this. Not an excuse, really should be using a plastic scraper. But in this instance, looking at how this part was machined, uh, you can see it's not, well you can't see from the camera, but the surface is not critical. That's why you need a gasket on there. So a few little scrapes here and there are not going to be a big deal. 
but I'm confident I can get these pieces off without scoring the aluminum in such a way that it's gonna cause a problem. But just a note, I do understand that these two things are not ever supposed to be used with each other. Welcome back to this afternoon's art class. Today we're gonna be using a nice fiber mat mesh material and we're gonna be tracing out some cast aluminum parts on it. Now, if we do this properly, we should end up with some happy little gaskets that should live between two pieces of metal and basically work as a bodyguard or a doorman, if you will, that will prevent any grease or fluids from passing by. This is a troll under a bridge. We wanna keep this stuff in place so it doesn't let anything through. Hey, if you haven't seen Sharpies like this, they're freaking amazing. They're retractable. No more losing the lid. We now have the outer diameter of this traced, and you may think to yourself, that's nice, you have an outline, but what about all this complex stuff here in the middle? That has to be sealed as well. Okay, we've got this stuff on here good and thick now, so what we wanna do is go ahead and press this back down, just like some sort of weird cookie cutter. Okay, there we go, I think that's reasonably close. So press this down on here. Now when you're doing this, you wanna leave, uh, basically go a little bit inside further than you need. That way you can trim it down later. So what's the old term? Uh, measure four times, cut seven times, or something like that. All right, now this edge over here is the critical part because it's so thin. So I'm gonna have it overlap on the outside of the case just a little bit. That way we don't have any issues with um, it breaking or not sealing or something. Yeah, it looks like our outside dimensions are pretty good. It's uh, Go ahead and go through now and uh, get the holes punched through. Now, this is a little trick here I learned a while back to uh, line up holes. You basically take yourself a Phillips screwdriver, drive it down through there on a piece of cardboard, give it a punch, and uh, it makes a nice little striation on the gasket itself where the center of the bolt holes should be. Okay, so we've got our gasket test fit on here. And essentially, we've only cut out the areas that we need. There's a couple of cavities down in here that don't really matter. And it'd be nice to keep grease out of those anyways. But there's a couple of indexing pins here and those seem to fit through. Our bolt holes are lining up good. So, um, I think we're just about ready to uh, reassemble this thing. I'm gonna use some of this Aviation Gasket Maker uh, just to give this a little bit better gription. I'm gonna use it just to hold the gasket to the front half of this part. I'm not gonna coat both sides of it because I want this to be able to come apart later. But having this piece of gasket stuck to the cover is gonna make things a lot easier when I'm assembling it, especially when I'm dealing with a bunch of grease. Okay, I believe this stuff, yep, we've tacked up. So what I'm gonna do is stick this on here and we've got the indexing pins that'll help line it up. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull it all back off, gasket and all. Well, I didn't let it tack up quite enough. It's not 100% stuck to it. I'm gonna go ahead and set this face down. Actually, I'll just set it right here and then I'll put the drill on top of it so it's got a little bit of weight on it. Okay, now, the tricky part is, the, the cats are super interested in this. The tricky part now is I need to plan how I'm going to reassemble this while putting in the grease. If the grease gets in the wrong spot, it can make a huge mess and keep the gasket from sealing properly. So I'm gonna sort of clean up the other parts that I need. I'm gonna do a mock assembly and just kind of put the parts in there, see how they go together. That way I know what I'm doing once I get the grease in there and we're actually assembling it. Um, so I need to clean up one of these gear sets here and then we'll continue. Just had to go use the eye wash. I got some of the uh, solvent in my eye and yes, I do have an eye wash. Um, perhaps a precaution I should have taken earlier there we go. Now it's uh, safe. Safe. I can poke myself in the eye. There is actually a motor service kit for this chair. And I was under the impression that that's what they were going to be sending me. Turns out that's not actually what I got. So there's a few parts missing. And I'm going to have to reuse some of these parts. For example, this little gear right here. This is what connects from the actual motor output to the gears on the new motor shaft. See, the thing is, like whenever you're replacing gears, you wanna do them all as a set. You don't wanna start mixing and matching stuff. I think in this case, we should be all right. I mean, there's no, I mean, the wear pattern's right in the center and there's no like crazy bird edges. 
and the bearings on this seem to be okay, so uh, I think we're okay. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and mock this up. The way this goes together is this gear basically goes up here. The bearing slides into that big housing in the back, and then this gear interfaces with this, sort of like that. And then this little tiny shaft right here, which you can probably barely see, is what drives this thing. So you have to kind of stick these together and then sort of jam them all in here at once. Now that I'm looking at this, uh, I just realized I'm going to have to trim my gasket back a little bit because it might interfere with these teeth ever so slightly. Now this is going to be a pain to grease. I think what I have to do is um, jam a bunch of grease on the back of this and then also fill up the housing when I put it on there. I think this is good enough. It's gonna make a little bit of a mess, but I can clean it up and then uh, we should be good to go. Now that our gasket is sufficiently attached to this part, I can take the uh, X-Acto knife here and do a little bit more fine tuning on the edge of this, basically just trim it while it's on here and then uh, we'll make sure it's not interfering with those gears. I think we've got it all clearanced out. Our uh, critical thin edge over here looks like it's all right. And uh, I think we're ready for assembly. Go ahead and pack this with grease now. All right, I think that should be enough for that portion. All right, I think that should be good. Go ahead and jam this in here. Nice. Now see, there's a balance between getting enough grease in there so everything's good to go and not having it ooze everywhere as soon as you assemble the parts. We did end up with a little bit of it right here, so I'm gonna change my gloves and uh, clean that up real quick. You can see here I'm rotating the shaft with a screwdriver and you can see the gears turning. So everything's meshed in place and we're good to go. Now, there is a rubber seal here. I should have, here, I've got, I'll use this other shaft. I'm gonna check to make sure that this rubber seal is not damaged with this other shaft here. Okay, yeah, looks like that goes in there just fine. These uh, these motor shafts have a uh, have a plastic collar right here that you can see, and that's what rides on that rubber seal, and that's that holds the grease inside, and uh, in theory keeps the dirt out. When I was cleaning this part, I got in here around the inner edges of this uh, lip seal and uh, made sure all the dirt and everything was out of there. Now there actually is not a lot of room for grease on this outer portion here. So I think what I'm going to do is pack a little bit more around the bottom edges of this gear here and uh, just make sure we've got plenty of the stuff in here. I'm going to use this, uh, I'm going to use this flat blade screwdriver here to uh, get this placed in here. Yeah, there we go. That works a lot better. All right, here we go. It's all come down to this point. We're going to jam this back on here and uh, hope that we're uh, good to go. You have to be real careful with this lip seal here when you're putting this on. Make sure you're not kinking the edges of it at all. Just working on very slowly and carefully. I'm not tightening them down with an impact drill, so don't freak out if you're seeing that. I'm just basically getting them started. And I'm gonna tighten them by hand so we don't, uh, don't jack anything up. Ah, I forgot, this ratchet's broken. Okay, I'm gonna finish buttoning this up. Camera's about to overheat, so I'm gonna let that cool down, and then I'll show you when we're done. I forgot to put the thrust washer back in. It's a little spring that goes behind one of the main bearings to keep it from crashing into the back of the casing. So I just took it apart, put that part in, and now it's all back together. Now for the next part, we have to install the new hubs on these wheels, so I have to pull these old ones off of here and swap them out with the new modified ones. And actually, I just realized it might be difficult to tighten up these set screws because they're inside the wheel. Um, so potentially, we'll have to reach through the openings, reach through the openings in the wheels to uh, tighten up those set screws. How long are these stupid screws? Holy crap! <laughs> I forgot I put ones that were that long, and that uh, I forgot I used ones that were so long. Ew! I just dropped that in the grease. Gross. And new hubs. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to put these nylon spacers back in there. I put these on originally to keep the uh, metal on metal sound to a minimum. Uh, so I'm going to reuse those. Now, here's the problem we're dealing with. These new hubs 
have these set screws installed. You can see right here and right here, but this goes inside the tire and this goes up against the chair. So you're not gonna be able to reach in here to get to these set screws. And actually, you're not gonna be able to get to that middle set screw at all. Dang it. Um, okay. So, what do we do now? I just had these modified so they wouldn't have an issue, but once this is down inside the hole, you're not gonna be able to get to it. You can get to this one, which I guess is better than nothing. Huh, dang it. Let me, uh, let me think about this. Okay, well, I think what I'm gonna have to do, I, I can get to this back set screw from behind the wheel. This front one's gonna be buried inside the wheel itself, so there's no way I can get to it. So what I'm gonna do is put some Loctite in here and just kind of preset a little bit of tension on it. That way it's giving it some force. Uh, not gonna be as much as would be necessary, but I think having this one set screw here uh, fully tight should be okay. Not ideal, but it'll work. Okay, something's wrong. I just put this wheel back on and now it's touching the frame of the chair. What the heck? Um, how is that even possible? Wait a second. Let's compare these parts. They're the same length. So, what's going on here? Are these hubs the wrong length? No? Okay, those are the same. So why on earth is the tire touching the frame? This doesn't make any sense. The offset on these hubs are the same. Here's old and new. Meeting service is flush. This is the new one. Let me grab the old one here. Here's the old one. Surface is also flush. I'm so confused right now. Here's the new shaft. Here's the old one. Everything, everything's the same length. Shoulder, tailpiece, the bearings line up. Okay, what am I missing here? Why isn't this working? Let me double check and make sure that this doesn't go. Okay, that doesn't go in here. It only fits one direction in the wheel. So, what on earth? I'm gonna take this hub back off of the wheel just to look at it. The other one wouldn't fit on here the other way, but I'm gonna check and make sure that like, I'm gonna check and make sure the hole on this side of the wheel isn't bigger or something. Because I tried putting it on the other way, on the bottom, and it won't fit. So, we're gonna double check on this side just to make sure it isn't different in here. Because one side of the hub is longer than the other and that's the only thing that could potentially be different. Okay. Ah, it does fit in there. Okay, so the hub was on there backwards. See, it slides in on this side. But not. Not on this side. Okay. Well, that kind of changes things a little bit now. Because our very large set screw, which was going to be used to take up most of the force here, is going to be buried inside this wheel. I'm not really sure what to do at this point. If I put it back together, well, I mean, I can reach this one set screw. This is a smaller one, though. Ugh, well, I guess I'll do the same thing. I'll put some Loctite on this one, pre-tension it a little bit, jam it in there, and then I should be able to reach this one from the inside. This set screw is a lot smaller, though, so it's not going to provide the clamping force that I was hoping for. I mean, it still should be better than nothing, though. See, we're, we're only dealing with, like, maybe a thousandth of an inch here. And it doesn't take much. But it's only about a thousandth of an inch. So it's not going to take much. So I, I, we should be good. This small, this one set screw, I think, should be all right. All right, well, let's put this back together the other way now. <laughs> this, this is just taking forever. We've preset the tension now on the big set screw. And we're going to disassemble this one put this whole thing back on here the other way, and now we'll be able to put it on the chair. Hey, it fits this time. 
Okay, that was a brief setback. Um, now, I just need to be able to reach through here somehow. Or around the back. Oh yeah, I can reach around the back. Cool. I just need to get my uh, Allen keys, the little ones. Reach around behind here, get that set screw tightened up. We'll be good. I'm not gonna lie, it's um, gonna be a little bit obnoxious to get the wheels on and off of this thing now. To get to that one set screw, I have to reach underneath here like this. And uh, I can still barely get to it. So, um, I mean, already though, I don't even have it cinched down tight. But you can tell already, there's like almost no slop in the shafts now. And that's, that's what we need. See that Allen wrench sticking up back there? So it's going to take a little bit of uh, screwing around anytime you want to take the wheels off of this thing. Hopefully though, I shouldn't ever be needing to remove the wheels. Okay, final result. Keep in mind this front caster is off the ground, so the suspension moves a little bit. But check it out. That's how much... That is an acceptable amount of gear lash right there. Basically nothing. Success! Now I just have to do the other side. Okay, chair's back on the ground. Let's uh, check in on this gear slot, on the gear lash. Still basically nothing. That's a very acceptable amount. Now let's compare it to the other side, which has not been repaired yet. This is the other side of the chair. And this should give you an idea, this should give you a pretty good idea of what the heck I'm talking about. Check out the amount of lash we have here. That's, um, that is significant. And that's because those hubs do not fit the shafts. Look at that. That's, that's insane. The other side doesn't even move. <laughs> that was, oh, okay, it's seven o'clock now. I started this project at, what, like two o'clock this afternoon? I've gotten half of it done. At least now I know what I'm doing, <laughs> in theory. So I'm gonna pull the other side of this thing apart and um, as you can see, it's also doubling as a, uh, hopefully the gasket won't come apart on this side. I'm pretty sure it will, but if it does, that's gonna be like another 40 minute delay. But I think we should be able to get this thing all back together and I wanna test drive it. I'm just gonna make the repairs. I'm not gonna film it. I'll, uh, I'll see you again when I'm done and uh, we'll be test driving. Okay, the project's done. After rolling around on the floor for a while, my uh, my neck's a little sore. I probably got grease on my head. Um, I'm gonna get some food here that's in the fridge and watch some YouTube for a little bit. Then we're gonna go test this thing. I think it's time for a maiden voyage. I'm all suited up, cold weather. Gonna head down to the store in this chair and uh, hopefully everything works properly. Um, so far I've moved it about three feet from where I'm sitting right here from back there and it seems okay. I'm really curious how loud the motors are going to be. Uh, like I said, these motors just by the way they're designed are noisy, but not until the gears break in. And we replaced half the gears, so it'll be interesting to see. Well this thing seems to be operating flawlessly now, no more squeaking and grinding and carrying on. Well, the repair seems to be successful. The thing's operating now, working just fine. We're not getting the grinding and clunking noises that we were getting from the hubs previously. And uh, I think we're good to go. It still has the normal operating sounds. Uh, that hasn't really changed much, but just kind of a side note, I was wondering if it would. 